Um, but I guess you did expect there to be more than a meal tonight. So, um, by way of introduction, for those who don't know me, my name is Wayne Rubin, and I'm the Food Vision for uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, first thing I want to say is thank you for coming along tonight to what you all know is, or well, maybe you don't know. So, just checking in, do you really know why you're here tonight? Okay. So we can draw that out for a while, can't we? Um, so quite seriously, um, I'm not going to tell you straight away, but I won't keep you waiting very long, but I do really want to say um, thank you so much for coming along on a leap of faith, um, because uh, quite seriously, we do really appreciate that. Um, it's, a, it's a school night, you guys have been working today, um, hopefully you're going to get nice dinner, all those sorts of things. And I hope that what we have to share with you tonight is truly going to be worth it. Um, you are the first people in Australia to know about what we're going to be sharing with you tonight. Um, this is not the secret bit, so... <laughs> there is a little bit of build up, okay? Work with me. I want to just look quickly at the overall um, contact lens market in, in Australia and, um, and look at the, the total size of the market. And, and this totally will probably make sense in a little while. Um, over the last uh, two or three years, um, in fact, the market has um, not gone up, it's uh, kind of gone down a little bit. So this is uh, millions of dollars, and as you can see, um, in 2010, we sold a bit more than in 2011, and we're back up about a half a percent in 2012. That's probably not what we would be wanting to see. Um, I, I would like to say that the contact lens market was growing and expanding and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, giving a sense of, my gosh, this has got to be something you, you want to be a part of. So um, I think that any of the major manufacturers that stood up and shared this, um, this slide with you would be a little disappointed. Um, so this is a um, wholesale value manufacturer to, uh, to you guys. Um, and, uh, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty, recent, pretty recent data. Um, so and you don't have to you know, call out answers and so on. But if I were to ask you about your own contact lens business, and say, you know, how many new fits do you do um, each week? My guess is that most of you would probably say we do some. You probably have a, thing, a, a figure in, in your mind on average. Um, some, you know, a couple of weeks, some a few more than that. But, um, but my guess is probably most of you would say, yes, we do new fits most weeks. Well, then would ask, is your overall contact lens business growing? Some would probably say yes. I'm, I'm not going to do a show of hands again here, but um, others... Well, arithmetically, if the total market is dead flat or growing, going backwards by half a percent, there's probably a lot of practices represented in this room who would say, my total business is, or my total contact lens business is not growing by very much. And, uh, and that's a real concern because if you're, if you're introducing new patients every week and your total business is not growing, um, there's a piece missing there, isn't there? So we get to the old leaky bucket type of thing. So um, this is your work here with the new initiations. The, buckets, the bucket stays the same. And, and things like patient dropouts um, cause, cause you to lose patients. Some patients drop out um, when they get to be in their, uh, in their mid-40s or creeping towards 50 and suddenly they feel that they need, um, need a level of vision that uh, contact lens previously couldn't give them. Um, and maybe, maybe there's some new multifocals on the market that com companies like, com like, like Cooper Vision could probably help with these days. Um, and if you're thinking that's a hint about tonight, it's not. Um, but it's certainly something that you could be doing to arrest some of your loss of, of patients. And some, some patients you're probably losing to competitors because there are other optometry businesses out there. Um, and some of them start with those, and some of them are S's, and some of them are getting to be quite competitive these days. And, and then there's that, there's that other thing called the internet, which is, um, that's out there, isn't it? In, who's heard of the internet? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Friend, of, friend of your business, or, or you describe some of the way up. Uh, so, you know, we know that in, in today's market, in, in the environment today that you, you, you live in, um, losing patients to the internet is unfortunately a fact of life. Um, Joe's probably going to show this, this graph as well because um, it says that uh, filling of data disposables in Australia has gone up a lot and um, 
and, and particularly in, in more recent times, for reasons that you probably are well aware of, and I'm not going to bang, out, bang on about that right now, um, data disposable certainly seem to be um, the new fit of choice for a huge number of practitioners, for a huge number of patients that walk through, um, through your door. Um, at the same time, we recognise that the numbers are out there that suggest that um, you know, Australia's appear to be some of the most avid online shoppers in the world, um, spending um, $27 billion by 2016 in online shopping, and uh, that probably doesn't warm your heart, um, but uh, you know, that's the sort of information that, that's out there, um, and research suggests that uh, the typical online shopper is younger, wealthier, better educated, and having higher computer literacy. And if I took the last part out of there, um, when they walk into a, an optometry practice, you might well say that's a candidate for data disposable contact lenses. And, uh, and I would tend to agree with you. And if you join the dots on the last few slides that I, that I just showed, I would suggest to you that there's probably now um, more than ever um, a need to have a, a daily disposable contact lens that truly has all of the benefits of comfort and eye health and uh, um, an excellent vision, and the ability to drive practice loyalty. And folks, um, those of you who have heard me speak before would know that you know, I take a pretty strong position on this. You know, as a manufacturer, a position that, that we stand in, um, I think we have a responsibility to you as initiating practitioners to try and do things, not necessarily just to drive loyalty from the, from the wearer, to the brand on the box, but more importantly to drive loyalty from the wearer to the practice where they got fitted. And there's not a lot of that going on in the market today. And tonight we're going to be talking about how we're trying to do something to grow the potential for you to drive loyalty between an ideal data disposable worn by a wearer, sourced from a practice, only ever bought from that same practice. What we're going to share with you tonight, uh, drum roll, uh, has actually never happened before. Um, so you are with us, um, witnessing something that's quite new. Not necessarily just the lens, although we are actually going to be talking about a new contact lens. You would be, I'm drawing it out. Um, <laughs> Wait for it. You would be drum roll exactly. Where's the drum roll? You would be aware that generally when contact lens companies like us come out with a new lens, R and D sort of pop out from the little darkened rooms and say, "Okay, we've got a new product marketing take over." So, okay, we're going to have a global launch, brand new product, all those sorts of things. The key account guys who work closely with groups like Provision and IKEA Plus um, come along and say, "We want this for our for our key customers in a private label." And that's really important, and we try and shorten the gap between the overall launch and the private label launch. Uh, tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, tonight we're going to be um, launching a silicon hydrogel data disposable. This product is available today. We have done some launches in the past where we tell you about things and hope it's all going to happen. Um, if you were to ring up customer service right now, you could get these lenses because we recognise the need for people like you guys to have a product that will actually drive patient loyalty to your practice and to have that in the newest and greatest lenses that are going around. And I think you're going to find these may well be those lenses. I'm going to ask Joe to come and tell you a little bit about the product um, from a clinical perspective and then we'll have another bit of a look at how that can potentially work for you. Thank you, Wayne. Let's now review this major new lens, a daily disposable silicon hydrogel that is only being launched as a private label to selected strategic partners of Cooper Vision. In this presentation, we will review the background and rationale for introducing such a product before covering the lens material and design, product specifications, and some comparative clinical study data. So why are we launching a daily disposable silicon hydrogel? As is widely appreciated, 
Since their introduction in the mid-1990s, daily disposable lenses have become steadily more popular. This recent review paper in Contact Lens and Anterior Eye Journal by Cho and Boost highlights the key reasons for the attractions and success of this modality. Probably the most significant benefit is greatly reducing the potential for lens deposits to produce problems. If the patient only ever wears pristine lenses taken from a sterile saline solution then, when compared with lenses that have become deposited, we can expect fewer complications and infections, better comfort, improved wettability, less dryness, better vision, no change in lens fitting behaviour, and no reduction in oxygen flow through the lens. There are other important benefits too. By eliminating the, le the need for lens care products, problems related to cytotoxicity, solution allergy, and lens case contamination are no longer a risk. And of course, there are powerful non-clinical advantages to the use of daily disposables too. Convenience is greater than with reusable lenses given there is no lens maintenance required. Patients who wear the lenses intermittently do not need to worry about long-term storage. Daily disposables are also cost-effective. Unless the lenses pass their expiry date, the cost per wear is a constant amount. Given all these benefits, it's not surprising to see a trend to increase prescribing of daily disposable lenses. This graph is of Australian data from the annual surveys of contact lens prescribing conducted by Nathan Efron, Phil Morgan and many co-workers around the world. It shows daily disposable lens fits as a proportion of all soft lens fits. As you can see, daily disposables accounted for over 40% of all soft lens fits in 2012 and the trend is clearly upward over a long period. Let's conclude this background section by considering the attributes of the ideal daily disposable lens. Any contact lens must of course be comfortable all day. Patients often rate comfort as the most important factor in lens performance and a high proportion of dropouts are due to comfort problems. So our ideal daily disposable will feature a material that is both soft and wettable, coupled with a thin lens profile. We have been in the era of silicon hydrogel lenses for well over a decade now. Keeping the cornea's oxygen supply as close as possible to normal is clearly desirable. Most daily disposable lenses are still produced in low DK materials, however, which has probably stopped this modality from taking an even greater proportion of fits, especially when the prescription is either higher, minus, or plus. Our daily disposable will have high levels of oxygen transmissibility that essentially eliminate the likelihood of corneal edema during daily wear. It's obvious that visual acuity is another key requirement, but it becomes even more relevant as the opportunity for full-time full wear increases. We want our ideal lens to incorporate advanced aspheric optics to minimise spherical aberration in particular. And while UV filters and contact lenses are not a substitute for sunglasses and other preventative measures, nonetheless they are especially useful when lenses are likely to be worn for special sports and recreational activities. So let's add a UV filter to the wish list. Let's now turn to the lens material and design of this new product. The lens material, Stenfilcon A, is a new version of CooperVision's third generation silicon hydrogel technology. As with our other silicon hydrogels, thanks to a fundamentally different material chemistry, we can achieve excellent wettability without the need for surface treatments, coatings or wetting agents. The water content is 54%. This contributes to a low modulus value of 0.49 MPA and allows ions and metabolites to pass easily through the lens. This modulus value is actually lower than that of 38% HEMA, so we have a silicon hydrogel material that is truly as soft as a hydrogel. The DK value is 80, approximately that of water, and this gives a DK of a T value of 100 at the centre of a minus 3 lens. Clearly this is well above the generally accepted safe minimum for edema-free daily wear and significantly higher than the values seen in daily disposables made from low DK materials. Average transmissibility values across the whole lens will also comfortably exceed the minimum requirement, even in higher prescriptions. The material incorporates a UV filter and a light blue handling tint. If we now turn to the design of the lens, 
we can see that we have applied CooperVision's aber aberration neutralizing system to the front surface. This aspheric geometry is designed to reduce spherical aberration and is calculated for each lens power. This means we are managing the effects of spherical aberration arising from both the eye and the lens. It's a single fit design of 84142. And one of the advantages of a low modulus, flexible material is that a single fit design will easily accommodate a wide range of corneal curvatures. The center thickness of minus lenses is 0.08 millimeters and the edge thickness is 0.07 millimeters. These values are thin enough to assist comfort and oxygen transmissibility while still allowing the lens to be easily handled. Let's look at the full specifications of this lens. I've covered most of these details in the previous slide, so I will only highlight the initial power range, which runs from minus 025 to minus 10. Plus powers will follow in due course. Let's now look at the results of a comparison study to measure the performance of this new lens against the major alternative daily disposable silicon hydrogel. The objective of this study was to evaluate the performance of this new lens against Johnson & Johnson Vision Care's one-day AccuView TrueEye. We used a bilateral, randomised, double-blind study with crossover after one week of daily wear. That is, each subject wore seven pairs of lenses, then swapped over to the other lens brand for a week. There were 57 patients, and as you can see, they were mostly nice and young. Here are the specifications of the two lenses used. The first result we'll look at is comfort upon insertion. Comfort is measured on a 0 to 100 scale. As you can see, the CooperVision lens had a consistent advantage with comfort scores in the mid-90s. The difference shown was statistically significant. Another important comfort measure is that recorded at the end of the day. Once again, you can see there is a consistent performance advantage in favour of the CooperVision lens, and the difference was statistically significant. We also measured subjective ratings of dryness at the end of each day of wear. This time, a score of 0 would mean no sensation of dryness, and a score of 100 would indicate extreme dryness symptoms. As you can see, the CooperVision lens was consistently better in this aspect of lens performance, and once again the difference was statistically significant. Let's now look at wearer lens preference regarding comfort. We asked the subjects to state their lens preference on the day of dispensing and after they had been using the lenses for the full week. On the dispensing day there was a small trend in favour of the CooperVision lens, but this was not significant. After the full week of wear, however, a clear comfort preference had emerged in favour of the new lens, and this was statistically significant. The combination of better comfort and less dryness was most commonly cited by subjects who had a comfort preference for the CooperVision lens. Another measure of patient appreciation of a lens is to investigate overall satisfaction. This takes in all aspects of lens wear, including ease of handling, comfort, vision, and so forth. This time there was a significant difference in favour of the CooperVision lens at both the dispensing day and after wearing the lenses for a week. Once again, the difference grew over the course of the week. In summary, this 57 patient study showed that, when compared with one day AccuView TrueEye, CooperVision's new daily disposable silicon hydrogel provided greater comfort at insertion, greater comfort at the end of the day, less dryness at the end of the day, was wearer preferred for comfort after one week of wear, and exhibited greater overall satisfaction. I hope you have found this review of the development and performance of this major new product interesting. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. Please feel free to contact your CooperVision Business Development Manager for further information, pricing and selling tools.